Welcome to the HR Happy Hour Work Break. I am with my friend Madeline Lerano. Madeline, how are you today? Hi, Steve. I'm well. I'm excited. It's Friday. I'm excited to be here. Happy we Friday. This is great. This is kind of our semi-regular thing we do, right? We hang out on the work break, always on a Friday. Always on a Friday. <laughs> which is pretty cool. And uh, it's been a great week, a busy week. So before we get into you, I want to find, I want to get an update from you, what you've been up to, what you've been doing, kind of get the, get the word from the Boston area. I, I did wear my Boston shirt in your honor today. Uh, it is a Friday. It's not quite happy hour here. It's close. I did cocktail. I have the Negroni. Madeline, Madeline's got the wine. I've got the classic Negroni. The best thing about this, uh, this cocktail is it's good. That's, I guess, the best thing about it. The other best thing about it, it is probably the simplest cocktail to make because the ratio in the classic Negroni, in case you're not aware, Madeline, is literally one, one, one. Equal parts, gin, Campari, sweet vermouth, garnish with a twist, little orange slice in there. Let's have a cheers first, and then we'll get into the yeah. show. How about that? You're so good with your fancy cocktails. Ah, oh, that's nice. I needed that. So, Madeline, what's been going on? I know you did some stuff with Trish uh, recently, yeah. but I'm sure you're up to a lot of cool things. What's been happening with you? Yeah, it's been it's been a fun week. A lot of sales kickoff meetings this week. So Trish and I were uh, having a, a really great time with the job fight team and um, had a great experience there. And you know, I've been working on new research. It's just a lot of research, less travel and more research, which is yeah. Uh, which is good. I love it. I love it. So new research projects coming up. Um, I'm doing some cool stuff with our friends, Jerry Crispin and Chris Hoyt at yes. the experience, um, you know, the career crossroads folks and, uh, anyone, any vendor that's interested in that they're doing some really cool things. So, yeah, that's a great group. They did. They have some cool media too, that they're doing too. I get, I get notified about, about what they're up to. They're doing some really innovative things and Jerry's legend, of course, Chris is great too. That's a, that's a really, really good group. Yeah. It's been a really good week. A lot of content. Like I'm, I feel like, like that's all I'm doing. We're churning it out over here, but we had a good week. Uh, a lot of good, uh, good stuff on the podcast, good stuff on the Alexa show, good stuff on this show. Uh, I'm super excited about that. A couple couple things I wanted to mention. Uh, this is an interesting one. You mentioned no travel, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you caught this one today, Madeline. Uh, I'm not an American Airlines guy. I'm a Delta guy, but still, I, I'm sure all the airlines are facing the same problem. But American Airlines announced this week they are starting a wine club mm -hmm. because they found themselves with a lot of unopened, unconsumed, high-end wine, right, that if you're on the international business class flights or the first class, you know, in first class cabin, business yeah. class cabin, right? They, most airlines actually, you know, have a really nice selection of wines. Yeah. Well, right, pandemic, plus even with, even with the flights that are flying, I think for the most part, they're not serving alcohol on them either, either yeah. anymore, right? Because of, right. they want people with the masks on, right? So right. Air, airlines found themselves with all this unopened wine that what can we do with it? So they started a wine club. You can, you can go to the American Airlines site and you can buy you can a box of wine that you could create or you could subscribe to a monthly three bottle per month wine club for $100, which it seems like a lot for three bottles of wine, but I guess it's really good stuff. So yeah, that's kind of clever in a way, right? Let's, let's pivot a little bit. Let's figure out like... Hey, what can we do with all we with all this wine? Let's just sell it. I thought that was pretty yeah. interesting. Oh, it's brilliant. I didn't I had no idea about this, but I think it's it's brilliant. I mean, like think about a year ago, Steve, would we have ever thought that American Airlines would become a wine club? Never. Isn't that incredible? You're right. We 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 talked about that a lot back in March, April, May when we were saying things like, "Oh my god, Ford Motor Company's manufacturing ventilators or, right. you know, just a I don't know. The, I don't know if they did this, but say the gap is pivoting from making jeans to making, you know, cloth face yeah. masks, right? right? And so it's a testament to the ingenuity to kind of, uh, you know, obviously the the folks who jumped in and made things like ventilators and PPE just for just being good corporate citizens and good world yeah. citizens. But yeah, I mean, that's right. I mean, I think as this thing drags on and on, right, the ability mm -hmm. to be nimble and clever and smart and pivot, right? That's going to be mm -hmm. more important for more businesses. Yeah, it's for it's for sure. So uh, kudos to American. I almost feel like I didn't go on the site to check it out. I might have to now that we shouted yeah, it out. Me like, too. I definitely order, that out. Or, order some wine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was some sad news today I, I must oh, share. I want to just share like, uh, well, two. I'm going to do two sports stories if that's okay. I shy away with it, Madeline, when I'm on with Trish because I'm not sure she did <laughs> Sports stuff, but I think you're you're cool with it. Two, one sad and one just kind of funny one. 
The sad story is, sadly, Hank Aaron passed away. I know. Uh, recently, or maybe even today or yesterday. And uh, he was a legend, right? Legendary baseball player. He had the all-time home run record, broke Babe Ruth's record back in the 70s, mm -hmm. the early 70s. I, I feel like, I don't want to say exactly how old I am, Melon. I feel like I remember that, though. I remember the home run record-breaking thing from my childhood mm -hmm. and that being a big deal. And the funniest thing about that, too, was if you watch- 74, watched, right? Was yeah. It I was alive. I don't want to- I'm not going to think how old I was. Young, young pup. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a baby <laughs> right i was told the story i was born <laughs> so but uh when you watch the clip of that of the home run that broke babe ruth's record it's funny he hits the home run and he's rounding the bases doing the home run deal and these two randos out of nowhere just the stands and are kind of running the bases with them they want to congratulate him it wasn't like a mob scene on the field yeah. but these two jerk offs, like who got onto the field, I couldn't imagine if you tried that today. Like never, the, the never. security at the at the football stadium or the baseball stadium, they'd absolutely they'd take you down so quickly. Like you, yeah. this guy ran around like half the bases with the guy. But I do remember mm -hmm. that. So, but but he was just a legend, legendary player, a great court, great citizen. Did so much for the game and try to promote mm -hmm. the game and promote like racial equality in the game. And he just mm -hmm. was an amazing, amazing American hero. Honestly, yeah, I, I have to say that. So yeah. And it's, you know, it's interesting because I've seen like a lot of posts and people sharing their experience, but it's, it's very emotional for people because a lot of people watch this game with their father or their mother or their grandparents. Yeah. And it, it's a, it's a real uh, childhood memory. So it's, it's a sad day for sure. Yeah. Baseball among all the sports here in the U S anyway. And I wonder if this is like this in other countries, I've never asked anybody, but from, from other countries, baseball always was that kind of classic fathers and sons or daughters mm -hmm. or, or parents and children kind of thing. Right. Unlike the other really? sports, like the, it's there's some sort of legend to that. But uh, anyway, the other one, I'm going to take, a, I'm going to take a little shot here and hopefully not get, get killed too hard. Uh, Madeline, mm -hmm. you, are you football fan at all? Do you watch the American football? You care? You're a pa Patriots year. fan. I, I, um, this is the first year that I've really watched football and I became obsessed and it's because hockey wasn't going on. So hockey was oh, right. You're a hockey mom, right? Yeah. yeah mom. So I've got, I'm a big hockey fan, a big Bruins fan, but I am very into the NFL right now. So you can, you can ask me anything. Yeah. So the Buffalo Bills playing this weekend for a shot to go back to the Super Bowl and, and lose probably as they do when they get to the Super Bowl. But I, I'm kidding a little bit, but not really. <laughs> they're, they're famous for getting to the Super Bowl and not winning. Right. I lived in Rochester for a long time, which is a, you know near enough to Buffalo that pretty much everyone in, in the area was a Buffalo Bills fan. I only attended one game in the Buffalo Bills stadium the whole time I lived up there. And the, here's the reason why it was only one. I'm a Jets fan, right? And that's where I grew up. I grew up in New Jersey, New York right. Jets fan, Knicks, Mets. I'm a New York sports fan. So it was the Jets playing the Bills at the Bills Stadium, which was, like I said, close to where I lived, hours drive or so. Went to the game and I was smart enough not to wear Jets colors or hat or jersey or shirt. I knew that's probably not smart. That'll just draw a lot of ire and enmity from the Buffalo Bills fans. I was just in just regular clothes. At any rate, early in the game, I was sitting down in the lower section near the goal line, right? So semi-good seats, maybe not really. But anyway, the Jets early in the first quarter score a touchdown like right in front of the goal line where I'm 10 rows up and, and seated. And I couldn't help it. I was a big, big Jets fan at the time. <laughs> so I did one of the – like a like – a, not a full-on celebration, but a – yeah, yeah, yeah half-hearted, right? <laughs> Within 30 seconds, I feel something, I feel an impact and I feel cold, wet liquid running down my back. I, I absolutely got hit in the back of the head with a, oh. with a pretty full beer. Oh, that's awful. Luckily, it was a plastic awful. cup full, like it wasn't a bottle or anything like that. And I knew two things I learned. One is be careful what I do the rest of the game. <laughs> <laughs> and two, like, don't don't turn around. Don't confront anybody because yeah. I, I just had to take my medicine. But I because there was no way I was coming out of that no. in one piece if I attempted. No, no. Hey, what are you doing? So, <laughs> the Buffalo Bills fans are crazy. crazy. That's the point. They're, I think they may be among the craziest fans mm -hmm. in the entire league. I, I don't know. I mean, they got to be right up. Everything, right? This is a big, this is a big, big year if the Bills, if the Bills make it. Yeah, I kind of I'm kidding about them a little bit, but it kind of be nice to see them win. They've been sort of of a tortured uh, franchise for so long. And the other teams who are in the mix, I think they've all kind of won semi recently. 
right? Yep. Probably. Kansas City. I mean, it'll be interesting if Patrick, I don't know, I haven't followed this week, but if Patrick Mahomes is out um, for the concussion, the Bills really do have a shot. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that would be pretty exciting. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, good stuff. Um, I, have a, I have a question for you, Steve. Yeah. So have you been following the Bernie memes? All the Bernie memes being shared. So I'm aware of this. I'm usually not dialed into internet culture so closely, but this particular one I did. I, I saw one with uh, Bernie. Oh, God, where did they put him? Oh, I'm forgetting now. It was pretty fun. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the ghost scene with Patrick Swayze <laughs> and Demi Moore. They put Bernie's head on on Swayze and they put the mittens on where Patrick was doing it. I did see that. It was pretty funny. Yeah, hysterical. I was going to ask you what your favorite was. I, I That's seen, it. That's the one. Yeah. I saw a dirty dance, one dirty dancing where he's just at the table with his hands mittened up. And then the other one I saw was uh, there was a Sex in the City one where like one of the cast members isn't coming back for the reunion. So they put That's birth. Right. So hysterical. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I good stuff. Bernie's a he's. I like him. I like the fact that like uh, he just didn't give a care, a care, right? If you will, I'll use the the good word, not the curse word. Just like, hey, I just want to keep warm. What do you? What do you? What do you, you know, and he, <laughs> it's pretty cool. No matter if it's Bernie or anybody else, just being kind of true to your authentic self. I suppose, I suppose when you get to be seventy five or eighty, how old Bernie is, you, you, like. You can be who you are. Yeah. What's that age limit where you can say whatever you want, right? Like, oh my God, I, I won't repeat any of it here, but my 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 RIP, my one of my grandmothers hit that age, I think reasonably young in her life. And all I ever remember her is saying incredibly inappropriate stuff every time I was around her. And, it, <laughs> and you'd be like, Grandma, you can't say that. And she's like, I'm whatever age. I'm 68. Yeah. I can say whatever. She 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 started real young on uh, I'm <laughs> old enough to say whatever I want, you know, without with impunity. But um, yeah. I think I'm going to start this year. I'm ready. I'm ready, ready now. You've declared I'm old enough to say whatever I want. I'm not waiting. All right. Well, with that said, then I say cheers, Madeline. Thanks so much for uh, hanging out with us on Friday. I love our little Friday, like happy hour work breaks we'll see you again soon. Uh, yeah. So be well and hope to see, hope to see you soon. Hope to see everybody soon. Uh, knock on wood. We'll get back on uh, out there and, 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 mingling doing some events and, and kind of we're getting there we're gonna get there i think real life that's what yeah i'm waiting for it too I'm excited. all right good stuff madeline thanks so much we'll see you again soon thanks everybody for listening to that the work break this week we'll be back next week with uh more fun and games and frivolity so uh have a great weekend everybody cheers <laughs>